right, we're going to look at solving the system of differential equations represented by this matrix differential equation. So we've got here dy dt, where y is the variable vector. So maybe our variables are x, y, z, or y1, y2, y3, or whatever. Uh, but we can see that our independent variable here is t. Uh, dy dt equals this matrix times y. So you might see the problem written also uh, like this. Um, D, I'm just going to use x, y, z for my variables. dx dt equals 2x plus 1y plus no z's. dy dt equals 0x plus 3y plus 8z. And dz dt equals 0x plus 1y plus 1z. So we might also see the system written like that. Um, so you want to be comfortable going for, back and forth with that. Hopefully you are already, but if not, you want to focus on being comfortable going back and forth between the two different kinds of notation that we're going to use here. Uh, the matrix form is useful because you notice we have a three-dimensional linear homogeneous first order system of differential equations. And so we've talked about using the eigenvalue method to solve that. And so far the only examples we've looked at are two by two systems and using the eigenvalue method for that. So here we're just going to extend that to a three by three system. All right, so we're going to start by finding the eigenvalues for our coefficient matrix and associated eigenvectors for that. And then hopefully we have a complete set of eigenvectors for each eigenvalue so that we can get our general solution. Remember that for a three-dimensional system, I need to find three linearly independent solutions that form the general solution. So my three linear independent solutions would be, uh, hopefully, of the form uh, some eigenvector times e to the lambda 1 t plus another eigenvector times e to the lambda 2 t plus a third eigenvector times e to the lambda 3 t. So each of these would be a solution to the differential equation as long as they are all linearly independent solutions to the differential equation then taking all linear combinations of them will generate all solutions. So they form a basis for the, eigen, for the solution space to this differential equation. All right, so this is what I'm after here. Uh, the difficulty arises when you get to this point and maybe these things that you've got here are not linearly independent and then you don't have enough to really span the eigenspace. So let's go ahead and see what happens here, though. I'm going to start by finding the eigenvalues and associated eigenvectors for my coefficient matrix. All right, so a minus lambda i. So I'm just going to be subtracting lambdas on the main diagonal. And then I'm going to take the determinant of this and set that equal to 0 and solve for lambda be smart about finding that determinant in a way that makes life easy for you. Notice that you've got a lot of zeros in this first column. So if I expand that determinant by expansion along that first column, that's going to be the easiest way to do this. Uh, so I'm going to have 0 equals 2 minus lambda times the determinant of what's left when I eliminate the row and column that's in. So 3 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda minus 8. Again, this is partially factored, so don't unfactor the part that is already factored, but you will want to FOIL this out and then refactor that. Just write down below here what you get. So when you FOIL this part all out, you'll get lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 3 minus 8, so minus 5, and then that factors easily, or you can use quadratic formula if it doesn't. All right, so that tells me what my eigenvalues are, 2, 5, and negative 1. And this is an easy problem, relatively speaking, because I have three distinct 
so different, real, so not involving imaginary numbers, eigenvalues. So it's pretty straightforward to, I should expect that I should be able to get solutions of this form where my lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3 are 2, 5, and negative 1. All right, so that's good, where I've got distinct real eigenvalues and the right number of them. Okay, so uh, now I just need to find an eigenvector that is the basis for the eigenspace for each of these eigenvalues. So sort of three little short problems. At this point, hopefully finding those eigenvectors is not too tricky. I'm going to go over here and do each of those. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to draw a line here so everything doesn't go stuck together. All right, so for lambda equals 2, uh, when I put lambda equals 2 in here, I will get uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 8, 0, 1, negative 1. And what I'm looking for is a basis for the null space of this matrix. So you can think about, essentially, you've got a system of equations here. Uh, and so maybe you want to use RREF on your calculator or maybe it's simple enough that you can just solve this one um, by hand. Uh, so you should be able to see that if you, if you make a system of equations where you have this matrix times a vector of unknowns, A, B, C, and set that equal to the zero vector and solve for that, uh, you should get that A is a free variable uh, and B and C will be zero. All right, so kind of thinking about the reduced row echelon form of what you're going to get from that. All right, so you'll end up with an eigenvector. So this will be my V1 that goes with my lambda 1. Uh, A can be anything. B and C have to be 0. So this generates all the solutions uh, for this null space. And then I can use that to write my solution for the differential equation. OK, so I uh, will just do the same thing where lambda equals 5. And so our matrix, when I put in lambda equals 5, I'll have negative 3, 1, 0, 0, negative 2, 8, uh, 0, 1, negative 4. All right, and what I get, I'm looking for here again is a basis for the null space. So there are a lot of ways to come up with this eigenvector. My advice, especially if you have not had linear algebra before, is to think about it in terms of this solution to this homogeneous system of equations. That's what it means to be in the null space. It's the vectors that you multiply the matrix times the vector and get the zero vector. And so you've got a system of equations here, negative 3a plus b equals 0, negative 2b plus 8c equals 0, uh, B minus 4C equals 0, and you're looking to solve that system of equations. Uh, so let's see, when you do that, I'm going to have to get my calculator to do that because I did not already do that. Uh, you can maybe do that in your head, um, but I'm just going to use a reduced row echelon form on my matrix here. So I'm entering, I'm actually going to enter a 3 by 4 matrix, but this last column here uh, will be all zeros, so you could get by without entering that. I'm double checking that I've entered all the numbers correctly, because uh, that's a really common mistake that I tend to make a lot. Then I'm going to let my calculator do the heavy lifting for me here and give me the reduced row echelon form of that augmented matrix. And I will get uh, A minus 4 thirds C equals 0, um, B minus 4 C equals 0, and C is a free variable. All right, so you want to write down a vector that satisfies that system of equations. So uh, there's a lot of ones you could use. Uh, if C is free, I might let C be 1. I don't want the 0 vector that satisfies this. 
Uh, but if C is free, I might let C be 1. And then B is going to have to be 4. And then A would be 4 thirds. Our textbook and the online homework, if you look at what their solutions are, they would not use a vector like this. They would use a scalar multiple of this vector so that we don't have fractions for the entries here. Any non-zero multiple of this vector would work for that, though. All right, and then I got one other one to do here. Lambda equals negative 1. Let's see if we can fit that in here. All right, so lambda equals negative 1. Our matrix, we will have 3, 1, 0, 0, 4, 8, 0, 1, uh, 1 minus negative 1, 2. And what I'm looking for is the B vector, A, B, C. So that, that satisfies that system. And again, you don't have to write all these steps out. I'm trying to do this to emphasize what it is we're looking for here, and that there are really infinitely many values that satisfy this. You might notice those last two equations are the same. So actually, I'm going to solve this one just by inspection. These last two equations are the same, and so I can let c be a free variable. That would drop out. And so I can let C be, say, 1. And then if C is 1, you can use either of these last two equations to figure out what B would have to be, negative 2. And then if B is negative 2, you can figure out what A has to be. So if B is negative 2, add that over and divide by 3, you'll get 2 thirds. All right, so this is an eigenvector that generates all of the eigenvectors for this eigenvalue. So at this point, it's just a matter of writing down your solution over here. Uh, let's see, I'm kind of out of space here, so let me just go ahead and I'm going to just draw some arrows here. All right, so for V1, I'm going to have 1, 0, 0, and then my lambda 1 is going to be 2. And then my V2 is whichever one, it doesn't matter which one is next. I'm going to use 4 thirds for 1 or any non-zero scalar multiple of that. And my lambda 2 is going to be 5. And then for my v3, oops, I didn't put a v3 there. For my v3, I'm going to use this vector or any non-zero scalar multiple of that vector would work too. And then my lambda 3 is negative 1. All right, so I'm kind of out of space to write that neatly, but you should put those vectors and those lambda values in those spaces. Don't forget the C1, C2, C3 to represent that you're taking all possible linear combinations of those solutions. And then that would give you the general solution for your system of equations represented by this. All right, so do some practice with these where you have real eigenvalues. Tomorrow we're going to look at some where we have non-real eigenvalues and or repeated eigenvalues, and so those are a little bit more complicated. We want to have a good handle on these kinds of problems before we get to the ones that are slightly more complicated. So do some practice with these. There's nothing really hard in here. It's just a matter of kind of paying attention to what you're getting and what it tells you about what to write down. So we've done the eigenvalues and eigenvectors before. It's just a matter of connecting that back to the solution for the differential equation. Okay, practice some homework. Paul? <laughs> last one I have on my little list here of videos I need.